In this video, we're going to prove a basic upper bound on the chromatic number of any graph. So what we're going to prove is that for every graph G, the chromatic number of G is at most the maximum degree plus one. Now in the previous video, we saw that a bipartite graph has chromatic number two. And a bipartite graph could have maximum degree being a very big number. So this bound doesn't always reflect the true chromatic number very well, but it is a bound on the chromatic number for any given graph. So we're gonna go ahead and prove this using induction on n, the number of vertices. Notice that we can assume that G is a connected graph. If we prove this theorem for all connected graphs, then the theorem will also hold for disconnected graphs. All you would have to do is look at each of the connected components within your disconnected graph. All right, the first thing to do in a proof by induction is to figure out the base case. In this case, the basis is when n equals one. And here we just have a single vertex. So the graph is the complete graph on one vertex. Obviously the chromatic number of that graph is one. You require one color for that one vertex, but the maximum degree is zero because there are no edges. So the base case works, the theorem holds. Next comes the inductive hypothesis. So here we assume that the result holds for every graph with n minus one vertices for some n bigger than or equal to two. And now we want to take G to be a graph on n vertices and show that the theorem must hold for this graph as well. To do this, let's take V to be any vertex of our graph. So I'll draw a blob to represent the graph and just pick out a particular vertex, anyone will do. And now we notice that G with that vertex V removed is a graph with n minus one vertices. So we can use the inductive hypothesis on this graph, this smaller graph. The inductive hypothesis tells us that the chromatic number of G without V is at most the maximum degree of G without V plus one. So this means that the graph G without V can be colored using at most the maximum degree of G without V plus one colors. Now imagine that you have a coloring of that smaller graph G without V. And of course you've used at most the maximum degree of that smaller graph plus one colors. Next, we want to worry about how can we color that last vertex V so that we will have a coloring of G. Well, we should observe that of course, the degree of vertex V in the graph G is at most the maximum degree of G. So in particular, the neighbors of the vertex V can use up at most the maximum degree of G colors in the coloring that we had of the smaller graph. Now our proof splits up into two cases. The first case is if the maximum degree of the graph G is equal to the maximum degree of the graph G without the vertex V. In this case, there is at least one color of the maximum degree plus one colors not being used by the neighbors of V. So we can go ahead and color V with that color. This gives us a max degree plus one coloring of G. So the chromatic number of G is at most the maximum degree plus one. And in this case, we're done. The second case is if the maximum degree of G is not equal to the maximum degree of G without V. But of course this means that the maximum degree of G without V is strictly less than the maximum degree of G. So using a new color for V will give us a max degree of G without V plus two coloring of G. And since the max degree of G without V plus two is at most the max degree of G plus one, it follows that the chromatic number of G is at most the max degree of G plus one. So in this case, we're done as well. And this concludes the proof. So now we've seen that every graph can be colored using at most the maximum degree plus one colors. So this is the bound that we've proved. And at the beginning of the video, I remarked that sometimes the chromatic number of the graph is very far away from this bound. However, we cannot state this bound in general being any less because there are graphs which achieve equality in this bound. For example, if we take the complete graph on n vertices, it has chromatic number n, but it also has max degree n minus one. So it achieves equality in this bound. Another example, is the cycle on an odd number of vertices. That will have chromatic number three, 
but max degree, too, so it also achieves equality in this bound. In other words, for a generic graph, you cannot improve this bound. But it turns out that odd cycles and complete graphs are the only examples of graphs which achieve equality in this bound. So if you have a graph which is neither one of those, you can improve the bound a little bit and say that the chromatic number is at most the max degree. And that's much harder to prove, and it's known as Brooks' theorem. We are actually going to prove Brooks' theorem in a future video, but it will require some more definitions and technical statements. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out videos that are related on this side, and I'll see you next time.